Hello and welcome back to Chemist Tea Time. Today's lesson will focus on deriving the ideal gas law, standard conditions, and density of a gas. Last lesson we covered a number of simple gas laws such as Boyle's Law, Charles's Law, and Avogadro's Law. We can combine these equations into a single expression that shows the relationship of a single quantity, like volume, to several other variables such as pressure, temperature, and moles. Once we combine, we have volume is directly proportional to the number of moles of a gas and to temperature, but is indirectly proportional to the pressure of the gas. As we did before, we can replace the proportionality symbol with an equal, equal sign and our proportionality constant, which is R. R is also referred to as the ideal gas constant, which is equal to 0.08206 liters times atmospheres divided by Kelvin times moles. So our ideal gas law becomes pressure times volume is equal to the number of moles times the ideal gas constant times temperature in Kelvin. From the ideal gas law, we can derive the simple gas laws because in each expression, you are holding certain components constant. For example, Boyle's law states that volume is indirectly proportional to pressure when moles and temperature are held constant. The following diagram shows how you can derive each of the simple gas laws from the ideal gas law. Another way we can use the ideal gas law is when we have a problem describing a gas under two different conditions, such as an initial and final condition. We can then rearrange the equation setting the expression equal to the gas constant as such. Because both initial and final expression are equal to the same constant, we can set them equal to one another. This allows us to solve for a specific variable if we know the other variables. Let's do an example using the ideal gas law to solve the following problem. Let's say Bob is at an amusement park and was holding a balloon with a volume of 6.25 liters and an air pressure of 757.2 millimeters of mercury and it was 28.50 degrees Celsius. Bob releases the balloon into the air and he immediately regrets doing so because he gets in trouble for littering and destroying the environment. But with that aside, what will be the volume of the balloon when it has reached an altitude where the temperature is negative 34.35 degrees Celsius and had a final air pressure of 366.4 millimeters of mercury? The first thing I want you to do is take a moment and write down the ideal gas law and identify the initial and final variables that you have. Once you have done that, try and determine the appropriate expression to use by only using the ideal gas law. Let's identify the initial and final conditions. The balloon has an initial volume of 6.25 liters, initial pressure of 757.2 millimeters of mercury, and a temperature of 28.50 degrees Celsius, and a final temperature of negative 34.35 degrees Celsius, and a final pressure of 366.4 millimeters of mercury. Well, we know that R and the number of moles are being held constant. So we can set the ideal gas expression equal to these variables. Once we do that, we have the following expressions, which we can rearrange and solve for the fi final volume. However, before we can do this, we need to first convert temperature to Kelvin and pressure to atmospheres. Once we do this, we can solve and we can have a final volume of 10.2 liters. Another way we can manipulate the ideal gas law is to calculate the molecular weight of a gas by experimentally calculating the density. In order to do so, if we rearrange the ideal gas law so moles divided by volume is equal to pressure divided by the gas constant and temperature, if we multiply each side by molar mass, remember this is mass over moles, the following expression then simplifies to the following. Density is equal to pressure times molar mass divided by the gas constant and temperature. When dealing with gases, there are a standard set for temperature and pressure, which are 0 degrees Celsius and 1 atmosphere, which is commonly referred to as STP. These standard conditions allow for comparisons to be made when comparing different sets of data. If we have a mole of gas at STP, we can calculate the volume by using the ideal gas law, which would equate to 22.4 liters. Now, question for you, does it matter what gas I have? What if I had helium and nitrogen? Would the volume be the same as STP for one mole of each gas? No, it doesn't matter what gas I have. One mole of any gas at STP will have a volume of 22.4 liters because each container has the same number of gas particles. 
I know today's lesson covered a lot of material and equations. It is important you jot down these equations and relationships that we covered today so you can practice further. Remember, you can always rewatch the video if you want. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Chemist Tea Time. Have a wonderful day.